Hello everyone. In this episode I have a little workflow time lapse of you in which I've made this character here. It's the first time I've used Substance Painter to apply a little bit of face paint to the character. This is Jinx Jones and I've been following a tutorial by Travis Davids and I think after using Substance Painter for a whole year things finally fall into place and thank you so much Travis for clearing all these things up. I've made two versions actually, this one and that one. This one is just with different hair and I'll show you why in a moment but this shows off the face paint a little bit more. Isn't that amazing? I'll show you how I've made that. So in Dash Studio I'm going to start by loading up the character and I'm going to close her eyes and I'm doing that so that I can paint on the eyelid so the position of the vertices does not impact the textures that you need inside Substance Painter. I'm importing the textures into Substance Painter and I'm dragging and dropping them onto the surfaces on the character that where they need to be. And then I'll assign each fill layer that Substance Painter generates there with a UDIM tile so that it knows that the arms go on the arms rather than on the whole body. And I'm also applying the normal map so I'll show you in detail how that works. And then I'm going to go and make a new fill layer and start painting. Fill layer, that's always the workflow. Fill layer followed by a black mask followed by something inside it. And uh, this is how I'm going to basically create a new fill layer for every single color that I'm painting with. I'm painting not just with the color value, there's also a bit of height information as well as glossy information applied there. And it's kind of nice to isolate these changes. So if I've made a mistake, I can just go and literally rub that out on the same layer, on the same mask. I really, really like that program, but it's really hard for me to get started with it as well. So I thought, you know, this is kind of nice that I caught all this on camera. So a little bit of embellishments there. I thought also maybe I'll go and give her a little bit of a shade on the lips with a regular paint layer. That worked really well in Substance Painter, but it didn't come out so well in Dash Studio. So I probably made a mistake there. I think there's something about how I've applied the maps or how other maps are applied there. So the effect isn't as strong as I had hoped inside Dash Studio. I'm going to bring everything back and uh, basically apply the maps that I've worked on onto my original character. So in my case, that's just the face and the head, nothing else really. And but, which also means I don't have to worry about it. So, you know, it depend, you don't have to apply the maps that are unchanged, essentially. I want to make a render out of this. So I'm going to add some facial expression here with the face controls tool. And then I decide for this hair, which I like, but that studio takes a long time to get that right. Accidentally, I had applied the auto fit version from Genesis 3, which took, took it forever. And I thought, hey, rather than stopping the process, I'm just going to start, spin up a second instance of Das Studio and just keep working on basically applying the same character again, using different hair. That's how I ended up with two versions. So I have two instances of Das Studio side by side that are running there. So this is a little test render now, and it seems to work okay. This is with a light set by Cake One, one of the click and render sets. All that needs is really a few accessories there. And I'm going to load them literally from Das Studio and apply some of the Mardi Gras beads. I've adjusted those in ZBrush as well so that they're kind of flat on her on her collarbone here, but I didn't catch that on camera. So on meanwhile, on the other instance of Das Studio, I thought uh, to bring out the face paint a little more and separate it from the hair, I just need one point light to either give her give her a little bit of a catch light in the eyes, but also to you know emphasize her face a little bit. I'm doing the same thing in my you know first instance of Das Studio, which looks very good. I like it. Hair needs a bit of a subdivision surface modifier and a little bit of a fit adjustment and a little bit of depth of field and all that and then we're kind of done. I decided to spin up a boost instance because I have two versions essentially running and I need to make two adjustments and a little bit of fiddling so I thought I'm going to give myself a productivity boost by spinning up a boost for DAS instance, literally the boost. And the idea was that once I'm happy with the first version I'm going to go and send that to boost, let boost render this in IRA server while I go and make final adjustments on my second scene, including test renders and iRay previews. And when I'm happy with that, I'm going to go and send that over to Boost for DAS as well. It's kind of nice to basically get the most out of my local hardware as well as the one in the cloud. I tried to make a little bit of an adjustment here on the hair, but it's so high res that it just didn't come back into DAS Studio. So I thought, okay, fine, I'll just go and uh, start with post-production at this point and uh, decide on a bit of a background color here that I can change and uh, paint in, well, a bit of a background change there so it makes it broken up a little bit. 
I'll give her a little bit of a movement mask in a minute so that he, she separates from the background a bit more. And then this is what came out. This was the first version that with the with the less wild hair, and then I have the second version with the you know more wild hair. I don't know which one I prefer. Do let me know in the comments which one you like best. And if you do have any questions, then please let me know, and I'm more than happy to address this. So as I said, I'm going to make a better tutorial on the steps that are necessary to make this happen. And I'm sure we're going to revisit that in a live stream. And until such time, take care, my friends, and au revoir. I'll see you next time. Take care. Bye-bye.